In this video, I'll refinish this old Haywood Wakefield desk. This was made by Haywood Wakefield in the 1950s. There is a date stamp on the bottom. It's hard to read, but it looks like it says 1957. Structurally, the desk is in good condition, but the finish is in bad shape. So I'll refinish it. First thing I did was to remove the old finish and I just used a scraper to get that off. It was an old thin lacquer finish so it came off pretty easily with the scraper. The top had this dark spot on it. It looked like something had spilled on the top and then ran down the front of the desk. On the drawer underneath that spot, there's a similar dark stain. And then on the panel underneath the drawer, there's more dark spots. So I decided to try applying some oxalic acid to remove the dark spot. I wasn't sure what had made the stain, but but I figured this would be worth a try. I just wiped it on with a paper towel. Once the first application had dried, I wiped on another one. And after the second application had dried, I wiped it down with some mineral spirits. And you can see that the stain is still visible it is a little bit lighter, but it's still there. And at this point, I decided just to leave it as it is. And I knew I'd be doing some sanding later on, which might lighten it a little bit more, but otherwise, it would just have to stay as it is. Getting into this side compartment with the scraper was gonna be difficult. So I wanted to see if I could at least get that shelf out of there. So I took a closer look and as it turns out, the desk is held together mostly by screws as opposed to glue. Most pieces I work on have glued joints and sometimes glued and screwed, but this one is mostly just screws. So I removed a bunch of the screws and first I was able to get out the shelf. And while we're looking at the shelf, the bottom of it, gives some clues as to how this was originally finished. On the bottom, it looks like it just has the color coat and it doesn't have the top coat on it. It feels very flat and rough, unlike the top side of the shelf, which is shiny and smooth. So they probably applied this color first and I'm not sure if it was a stain or if it was sprayed on. And then over the top of that, they would have sprayed probably a clear lacquer finish. Around the edges, you can see where there was no finish applied at all. And after removing a few more screws, I was able to remove the whole side piece. And that made it a lot easier to work on. But then I needed to make some temporary legs so that the rest of the desk would stay upright. So I just used some scrap wood and screwed on a couple of legs. And I was able to use the screw holes that were already there.
To get into these corners, I used this smaller scraper that allows you to get right into the corner. And it comes with a bunch of different shaped blades to allow you to get into all kinds of places. Here on this drawer front, you can see uh, some of the different variations in the wood color that you'll sometimes run across when refinishing something. This section here is where the finish was just removed. And this light strip up at the top is underneath where the drawer pull was. So that's been covered up since the desk was made. It never had any finish on it. And that thin, darker section underneath that light section is the shadow from where the drawer pull hung over the drawer front. That area was partially shaded from the light. So that area stayed darker than the rest of the drawer front. This section here was underneath that dark spot on the top where it looked like something had spilled over the top of the desk. So this had some small dark spots too. You can see where it looks like it ran down the front of the desk and just kind of collected down here at the bottom where these dark spots are. So I decided to give the oxalic acid a try again. I tried two applications of the oxalic acid. And once again, it looked like it did lighten the spots a little bit, but they were still visible. So like the spot on the top, I decided just to leave it as it is. And I would try sanding it a little bit, but this was probably as good as it was gonna get. The top of the desk had a small dent along the edge. So I wanted to try to steam that out before I moved on. To do this, I used a small soldering iron and some water. I first put some water directly onto it, and then I applied the heat from the soldering iron with a damp cloth in between the two. This works well on dents in wood, where the wood fibers are still there, but have just been crushed. The fibers will absorb the water and the steam and hopefully plump back up to their original form. But it won't work on something like a gouge where the wood fibers have been torn out because there's nothing there to plump up again. Then it was time to apply the finish. I'm not a fan of the original yellowish finish that was on this. And after removing all of the old finish, I couldn't bring myself to put another finish like that on it. So I decided to just try a clear finish. And if someday somebody wants to restore it to its original look, they could still do that. The first finish I tried was clear Danish oil. This is really easy to use. It just gets applied to the wood and the wood absorbs it and you wipe off the excess. And I believe it's a mix of oil and varnish and it's supposed to dry inside the wood fibers as opposed to creating a film on top like polyurethane or lacquer. Once the Danish oil had dried, it did look pretty good, but I noticed that in some spots, especially here on the side, there were spots where I could see that I hadn't gotten all of the original finish off of it. The original finish had gotten deep into the wood fibers in some spots. 
So it's a little hard to see on camera, but they appear almost as greenish spots on the wood. I did sand the piece after I scraped it, but obviously not enough. So I just had to remove the finish that I just put on it and start over again. I only saw the spots on this one side, so I just did this side over again. I didn't do the whole thing. To take off the Danish oil, I used an orbital sander. And even though I had waited a few days to, get, to let the oil dry, there was still some oil in the wood that hadn't dried when I did this and it kept gumming up the sandpaper. So every once in a while I would just brush it off with a brass brush. Once I was down to clean bare wood with no more traces of the original finish, then I applied the Danish oil again. And it was at that point that I decided that I just didn't like the Danish oil at all on the piece. Although it may look decent on camera, it just looked kind of blotchy to me. This desk is made of birch. It's solid birch. And birch does tend to be blotchy sometimes when you finish it. Also, this desk was never meant to have a clear finish on it. And in areas like this particular side, it's made up of multiple boards. It doesn't look like they made any effort to match up the look of the boards because it wasn't really necessary because the finish that was going on it was only going to be semi-transparent. But when you put a clear finish on it, the variation between the boards becomes more evident. And then the way the wood absorbed the oil and got blotchy in spots, that to me just made it look even more bad. So I decided the Danish oil had to come off the entire piece and I had to start over again. So I sanded down the whole thing again, down to bare clean wood, and I went with a different type of finish. I used a clear lacquer. So it's still going to be clear, you'll still be able to see the wood, but it's not going to get absorbed into the grain like the Danish oil is. So it won't accentuate the grain as much. So it will have a little more of an understated look. To apply the lacquer, I got out the spray gun, although you could do it with aerosol cans. I don't remember exactly how many coats I put on, but probably three or four. Once the lacquer had dried, I went over it with some wax and a white Scotch-Brite pad. You could also use fine steel wool for this, but steel wool can be a little messy sometimes. It will leave little bits of steel wool dust that can get into the wax or get into the grain of the wood sometimes. So, so this time I decided just to use the Scotch-Brite pad. And here it is, all finished. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thanks for watching.